Okay, welcome back once again. You can see that now we've got the uh, two transistors, T1 and T2, soldered in. Um, the next components we need to put in are the electrolytic capacitors, and those are these can-shaped uh, components like so. Now the important thing about electrolytic capacitors is that they are um, polarized. There is a positive and a negative side. I'm going to get right up in the camera here. You can see that on the side of these electrolytic capacitors, there is a minus sign printed inside of a stripe on one side, and the lead that's closest to that side would be the negative side. So when you're putting these into the board, just make sure you get them in the right way. On the board is printed a, a plus sign and a minus sign. Just make sure you line up the minus sign on the component with the minus sign on the board. And here you got to be a little careful because you need enough room to bend this component over, like so. Once you get the component in place, just bend the uh, leads to keep the component where you put it. I'm going to grab my iron. <clears throat> Same old routine here. I'm going to tin the iron, get some solder going, get the oxidation off. Wipe it off on my uh, paper towel and solder away. Now electrolytic capacitors aren't too, too sensitive to heat, so you can uh, solder this one leisurely. Like so. Do the other lead. Like so. And very good. So there are two of these. I'm going to go ahead and do both of them right now. Since we only have two, I think you can probably endure me soldering one more component. <clears throat> Same thing, find the plus and minus sign on the board. Find the plus and minus sign on the component, line them up. Like so. Just bend the component over. You really can't screw this up. There's a, a diagram on the board showing where the component's supposed to sit. <clears throat> and solder away. There's one lead. There's the other lead. And very good. Okay, I'm gonna grab my diagonal cutters and just trim the leads off. I'm trying to get these leads as flush as I can to the board because I know that this board has to be soldered onto this battery are uh, connected to the screwed onto this battery connector and there's not much room for clearance so you, I really should have probably made solder solder joints that aren't as tall as these but hopefully I'll be able to get the the board onto the, the holder here okay there's one cut that one off and there we go okay the, the last step according to this is to attach the battery connector <clears throat> We need to do a little trim job on these wires according to the directions, which I'm going I'm to show on the screen here. We need to trim these leads to 20 millimeters, 2 centimeters. So I've got a ruler, I've got my leads, I'm just going to measure 2 centimeters like so and just cut. Do the same thing to both sides. need to strip the wires a little bit so you have something to solder to. I'm just going to do this brute force. I should use some wire cutters, but I'm just going to use my diagonal cutters and just pull the insulation off like so. Give the wires a good twist to make sure they can go into the hole okay. And I'm going to kind of peek at the directions while I'm doing this, make sure I get this right. It looks to me, I don't know if you can see on the... Uh, board here. The board's labeled black and red, so just put the red wire into the red hole and put the black wire into the black hole. Need to do a little better job of twisting these. There we go. Well, I'm having a heck of a time getting these wires into the hole. The holes are pretty small. You really got to twist these wires tight. There we go, like so. And I'm just going to balance these here. Same thing, tin your iron. 
give it a wipe on your moist paper towel. And of course, you don't need to be too sensitive about the heat on these wires. Just, just make sure you don't heat it up so much that the pads come off, uh, come off of the uh, PC board. There we go. A little more solder. There we go. Let that cool for just a second. <clears throat> and give it a little trim job. I think I'm going to trim just a little more of the wire off. I know I have to get this board close to this uh, battery connector. There we go. Now it should just be a matter of screwing this uh, <clears throat> board to the, uh, the battery connector. So you can see here we've got the battery connectors attached for the two wires. We have a couple of holes here for the screws to go into. Sorry, it's a little awkward to do this for the camera. There we go. Let me grab my screwdriver. And I'm trying to do this so you can see at home there. Just give that a screw and find screw number two, like so. Put it in the hole, make sure it goes where it's supposed to go. And give it a twist. And the board is now attached to the battery holder. <clears throat> All right, this is what we call the smoke test. Hook the battery up and hope for the best. It's called a smoke test because if you're using higher voltage things, it might actually smoke, but with some, some little project like this, it's not gonna smoke. And uh, there we go. The end result, we've got a blinking heart contraption, <clears throat> courtesy of Velman flashing LED sweethearts kit completed. An easy kit. From beginning to end, it took about an hour of soldering time. I'm not the fastest solderer in the world. You want to go really slow and careful, but a very uh, nice present for Valentine's Day. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good day.